This is a 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Sport. The third generation of this small Subaru SUV, but the very first one to be built in the United States. And that's because the Sport and the Limited are two and a half liter versions of the Crosstrek and the two and a half liter versions of the Crosstrek for the United States are built in the United States. And as you can probably guess, I'm not on my usual route. I'm not in my usual state. I am a guest of Subaru to try this new Crosstrek out. Uh -huh. And I am not alone. To my right is Zach Palmer of Autoblog, the road test editor and a very fine young gentleman. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers indeed. There are four trims of the Subaru Crosstrek. The base, the premium, this sport, and then the limited. There is a fifth one coming, the Wilderness, but it is not out yet. And that makes this the second highest trim of Crosstrek you can get right now. My name is Robin Warner, by the way, an experienced engineer and magazine editor. And yes, I am eventually gonna get a haircut. I review all kinds of cars from a $25,000 Ford Maverick to a $425,000 Rolls-Royce Cullinan. I'll happily jump into Honda Accords, BMW M3s, and Porsche 911 GT3s. And I have fun every time. Please subscribe and join me. The base price for the third generation Subaru Crosstrek remains just over $26,000. The price has not increased from the second generation for the base car, but it does go up a little bit from there. I'll go ahead and put the prices on the screen for the premium and the sport and the limited. And while both the two liter and two and a half liter engines offered in the Crosstrek are largely the same, they have been updated and the structure that this is built on is stiffer than the outgoing model. And of course, there's been a lot of changes to the content and all the rest. So with that, I think now is a good time to pull over and show you around and inside this car in a bit more detail. Okay, here is a closer look at the brand new third generation 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Sport. And full disclosure, probably no surprise, I'm getting a chance to do this walk around after we've done the off-roading portion of things. And we did the off-roading portion of things going up this mountain right here, the Plate Kill Mountain, if you're at all curious. So yeah, interesting afternoon to be sure. This car is very similar in size to the second generation Crosstrek. Very similar look as well. They were definitely subtle with design changes, but even with the mud and even with the subtle changes, it's worth taking a closer look. Looking at the car from the front, we have this really interesting open pattern in the grill right here and a pretty tastefully sized Subaru logo right there. I do quite like that the sport trim has this gold trim piece right here. You can also see it on the lower doors on the side as well. We do have these distinctive and large fog lamps below that and, you know, a subtle little lip spoiler here, those types of things. I think the headlights have a really interesting shape. You see they kind of like bug eye bulge out from the rest of the body a little bit and then just carry on into the side a fair amount. Nice little Subaru logo right there. Generally speaking, I think it's a tasteful look, but this is the two and a half liter engine. We should take a closer look at it. And there is your two and a half liter flat four engine, horizontally opposed four cylinder engine. It is naturally aspirated and it is also longitudinally mounted. It is mounted fore aft like that, which means the transaxle is behind it right there. And you can see, if you look closely, I'll turn the light on, you can see the half shaft down there creeping forward. Now that does mean the engine itself there's the center line of the front axle. The engine itself is still fairly far forward. Most of the engine is ahead of the front axle, but because the transaxle is behind the engine, not next to it, weight distribution isn't quite so bad. Also for the DYI folks among us, engine oil filter is very convenient. And there is your windshield washer fluid right there. Looking at the car from the side, you can see that it has a fairly typical hatchback slash station wagon kind of shape, but it is technically an SUV and the government does agree with that. I'll go ahead and put the dimensions up on the screen so you can check that out and let you know that I have a lot more information in the description. Just as I mentioned earlier, I do quite like this 
gold trim piece that runs along the side on the base of the doors. These are gloss black side view mirror covers right there. And we do also have black trim around the windows as well. And black and beefy roof rails as well. You're looking at 18 inch wheels and those wheels are black when they are clean. And we have decent amount of sidewall on the tires as well. These are 55 series tires that you get 225, 55, R18 tires. And they are all season tires, not all terrain. Looking at the car from the back, pretty typical shape there and some pretty typical elements we see here that I'm not the biggest fan of. This faux diffuserness that's in here is definitely unnecessary here. But I do think the taillights are pretty cool with this kind of split personality right here. And it does bleed into the side of the car. And again, I do like these gold trim pieces that they applied, I think is a nice element. And thankfully, no fake exhaust here. Just one tailpipe underneath the bumpers, just as it should be. Nice gas struts to open it, so no need for an electric opening tailgate as far as I'm concerned. You do have this nice little like little river pattern baked into this all season cargo tray right here. You do also have a couple of tie down loops right here on either side. And yeah, it's a decently low cargo floor. You even have cup holders in back if you want to tailgate or hang out back here and a privacy panel if you need it. I'll go ahead and put cargo space on the screen right now so you can check that out. You know, pretty decent, pretty easy access space. But if you need more, that is of course easy to do. And my lovely assistant, Zach, just had to pull a couple of levers to expose a lot more room and space for two. I'll go ahead and put these cargo figures up right there so you can check that out. I do not have my bike with me, but I'm pretty confident it would fit pretty easily. Anyway, let's check out the back seat. As you can see, we have pretty high seat bottoms right there and some nice trim that's similar to the outside in the inside as well. I am five foot 11 inches or 181 centimeters tall, and I have plenty of knee room, honestly, a good three inches right there. Also, the seat bottoms are pretty darn high, so I have decent thigh support. And I also have less than a 90 degree bend in my knees. I even have headroom. So the moon roof lowers the headroom a bit here, but it goes up for the back passengers right here. So I do have enough headroom in the back. So it's really pretty comfortable back here. Furthermore, I do have a couple of USB ports right there. And yes, an armrest with cup holders. What luxury to the front. This being a drive with Subaru, you can see that I have my cameras all set up. We have to keep moving. You can also see Zach Palmer of Autoblog hanging out right there. He's actually gonna help me talk about the features in the front of this car. First of all, you do have the typical controls on the door right here and this nice little kind of like faux carbon fiber shape right here. You do have a power adjusting driver's seat with lumbar support. The passenger front seat is manually adjusted. You can adjust the brightness of your instrument cluster to the left of the steering wheel. And we do have these nice aluminum pedals down low. The steering is adjustable, both tilt and telescope. It's manually done right there. You get two real gauges on either side of a small digital screen right here, which displays a lot of information. And the steering wheel itself has this nice little stitching down low, but a pretty thick rim and lots of controls. Media stuff to the left, cruise control to the right. However, this is also your sport and intelligent drive mode buttons right there. Next to that, we have an 11.6 inch portrait mounted center console touchscreen. Beneath that, we have Zach's phone modeling for us, a nice wireless charge pad, and we do have a couple of cup holders, heated seats, and a pretty typical looking Prindle right here. Ah, but we do also have an electric park brake now. Below that, we do get lower center console storage space, and it does go fairly deep. You do get a couple of USB ports and an auxiliary port right there. Right now, Zach's phone is plugged in, even though it wouldn't have to be with the charge pad. Push button start is right here. And there's the instrument cluster screen lit up in the center and the portrait mounted center console touchscreen right there. Now, Zach, you've played around with this screen a fair amount. What, what stood out for you on the screen? It's pretty. Uh, it looks a lot more advanced than, uh, you know, the 
the previous screen that this thing has. My biggest beef with it is it's just pretty slow. It, just, it is a little just, slow. Just a bit laggy to inputs. I would love something that's a bit quicker. I do like the portrait mounting. I think that works well in this car because this isn't a terribly wide car. So you don't need so much real estate going this way to take be taken up by a screen. We do also have X mode. That is a drive mode in a sense. It's kind of like an off mode drive mode. And because this is a sport, the sport and the limit to have two stage X mode, which means you can have snow and dirt X mode, which gives you a little bit more traction, a little bit of slip, but then you have deep snow and mud, which gives you a lot of slip and a lot of ability to spin up all four tires and uh, keep the momentum going. We are gonna be in deep snow and mud a little bit later on. Talk about that soon. You do get both wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you also get the 11.6 inch screen. The base Crosstrek gets a seven or eight inch screen. Do you happen to remember, Zach? It's actually a dual screen setup. There's one screen on top and one screen on the bottom, two different screens. Ah, two different screens. Yeah, it's a weird setup. And it requires that you plug in your phone to get Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. This one screen, you don't need to do that. Dual zones climate control, you can control it. There's that lagging issue we're talking mm -hmm. about. You can control it on the screen right here, independently adjust it right here. But as you can see, we do have physical buttons right here. Also dials for volume and tuning. Real quick, so drive modes. I talked about X mode. I talked about S and I. That stands for sport and intelligent. There's no adjustable suspension here. So what you're changing is you're changing the throttle map and you're changing the way the continuously variable transmission behaves. Sport gives you more revs to play with generally. Intelligent tries to maximize fuel economy generally. Neither Zach or I will be trying to maximize fuel economy so much on this particular drive, but I think it's a good time to get back to the drive. All right, let's dig into the powertrain. Two engines are offered. A two liter, that makes 152 horsepower, or a two and a half liter, that makes 182 horsepower. The two and a half liter is in this sport and the limited trims and will be in the wilderness. The two liter is in the base and premium models. Peak horsepower for the two and a half liter engine has not changed. 182 is what it made in the second generation Crosstrek as well. However, the peak torque, 178 pound feet, is up by two. And that's not much, but critically, the torque peak comes 700 RPM earlier. Subaru was able to achieve that by changing the air intake around a little bit and playing with the tuning. But that is a very welcome change to get torque a little bit earlier. Whether you get the two liter or the two and a half liter, you get a Linetronic, I believe they call it, continuously variable transmission, which, you know, is fine. It's getting pretty common these days to have a CVT in your smaller cars. But this being a Subaru, of course, we do get all wheel drive. That's standard across the board, regardless of the engine as well. And the two liter and the two and a half liter do get a different tune of the CVT. So the CVT's behavior is gonna be different between the two engines, which makes sense. The two and a half liter has more torque, has more torque down low, and can make use of lower revs than the two liter can. But the two liter does get better fuel economy, but not by that much. I'm gonna go ahead and put the fuel economy of the two liter up on the screen right now so you can see that. And now I'll put the two and a half liters fuel economy up. You can see they're actually quite, quite close. So even though you get 30 more horsepower, you don't pay much of a price in fuel economy. But while fuel economy is incredibly important, it's not nearly as much fun as accelerating. It's never as much fun as accelerating. Of course, I had to test that. Let me show you now. All right, time for a quick acceleration test. I do have the Crosstrek in sport mode and I do have two and a half liters to work with instead of just two. See how it goes. All right, coming to a complete stop. Bit of brake torque. 2200 RPM, off the brake. Ah, yeah, that's not bad. Go on, go on. There we go. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right, not bad. Really, really not bad. It takes a little bit of time for the engine to get up to speed, to get the revs up, 
where you can really start moving a little bit, but then after that you get perfectly reasonable acceleration. That's not gonna leave you overwhelmed with power ever, certainly, but it's certainly not gonna be the type of thing where you feel like you can't get out of other people's way either. It's perfectly adequate acceleration. All told, this two and a half liter is perfectly stout, and it is, frankly, a huge upgrade from that two liter Crosstrek. That one does struggle a little bit, this feels completely reasonable in most any circumstance, including when you need to accelerate. Yeah, not bad. Even though it's not the first thing you think of when you think of small SUV, Subaru did give us a few curvy roads to try the Crosstrek on, so I did get a chance to see how this thing handles. Let me show you that right now. All right, everybody, time for a little handling test. I do have the Crosstrek in sport driving mode and stability control is off. It is also a bit wet outside, so we're not gonna push too hard, but see how it feels. Well, in sport driving mode, the CVT is definitely more aggressive, keeps the revs higher, you feel that right away. And we do have a little bit of body roll. You know, we do have a lot of ground clearance here, of course, 8.7 inches but you know, the tune is still pretty soft. So we have a little bit more aggressive powertrain now, but this body floats around a fair amount. We get a fair amount of body roll, a fair amount of pitch and dive. So this is definitely not your go-to Canyon Carver. Everything feels connected and competent. The front end doesn't respond terribly quickly, but it is in sync with the rear. So the car moves as you'd expect. But yeah, this is a bit on the soft and floaty side. Okay, but now let's get into the Subaru Crosstrek stride a little bit more. 8.7 inches of ground clearance after all. I also got a chance to test the new third generation Crosstrek off-road. Let me show you that right now. Okay, time for an off-road test in this third generation Subaru Crosstrek. I do have it in X mode and I do have it set to deep snow slash mud and we'll see how much we need it. Let's go. We're not even really on the course yet, but this is hill descent control automatically working. So my feet are not on the brake or the throttle and we're just creeping down this steep-ish gravel hunk right here. So there's a little feature. X mode has built in hill descent control. Okay, now I think we're getting to the real start of our nice little off-road course. Look at that, two muddy tracks and all. We've got a pretty steep grade right here and some loose gravel and some bigger stones in between that. And it's getting through that without any trouble. We do have about 2,500 RPM right now. We're only going 1,500 miles an hour. So we do have a lot of torque multiplication helping us out. The purpose of a cross trek is to be able to get to the cooler, more scenic trailheads, to get farther off the beaten path than the average person. and this kind of trail is the kind of thing you'd see and we are ascending it with zero trouble so far. Zach, how does it feel from the passenger seat? Uh, pretty effortless. You really haven't uh, had to goose it or any, any sort of issues so far. So far. Look at this. You can turn and climb a hill and drink a Coke all at the same time. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. The coke part, I think, was the hardest part. <laughs> the coke part might have been a struggle there. <laughs> well, let's do a quick acceleration test, because why not? Yeah, there we go. A little bit of a bump. <laughs> and back to accelerating. Yeah, totally fine. This is a fun little car. I have to admit, this is a fun little car, and I would be more comfortable in this than just about any other SUV this size on doing something like that. Maybe Ford Bronco Sport. Okay, so we've made it to the top of this trail, and I'll show you a picture I got to take while I was up at the top. Now it's time to go down. I was told that going down is gonna be a little bit gnarlier, so let's find out. We're doing hill descent control. It is two miles an hour. It is holding. I'm gonna to try to get it down to one mile an hour. And the reason why I wanna make sure I go nice and slow here is so that I can make the left turn without much trouble. I see we're sliding around a lot. But now we need a healthy amount of throttle to 
get it there we go and we want to straighten the wheel as much as we can and this is where the deep slow and mud is helping because we've got a lot of loose mud here and we got to keep the revs up but we are still moving but we got a steeper part coming oh yeah oh come on still going there we go yeah no problem it was dicey there for a moment because it was really loose but we were able to get it done now this is a healthy drop right here and still dropping oh there it is <laughs> So that was all hill descent control, but it could not quite keep us at two or three. We got up to five miles an hour. So we have a second drop here. This one's straighter at least. So my foot is on the brake and I'll... All right, and this is all hill descent control here. Scene three, two to three, a little more and crunch. <laughs> nope, no crunch. Okay, mostly it's just wet. Splash. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't take most compact SUVs through here. You're basically just sliding in between two ruts now. Oh. You got to give Subaru credit for taking their non off roady version of their compact SUV and say, yeah, you can run through a trail like this, no problem. So far, it's been pretty low stress. There was that muddy, soupy hill that we had to get up that tested the limits of X mode, but we managed it. And this is with the stock tire. You know, had you had a more purposeful tire on this, if you planned on doing this kind of stuff a lot and have an easier go, but uh, yeah. This is proving to be plenty capable off-road for many of the adventurous types. Okay, even the most adventurous off roadiest person that spends all their time on the trails is going to have to be on road sometimes. It's going to have to commute to work, etc., etc. So, how does this Crosstrek ride? Well, I'm happy to say this is perfectly comfortable down the road and also a noticeable improvement over the second generation Crosstrek. That car did kind of bob around a little bit and was a little bit louder than ideal, just picking up like road noise and wind noise and those types of things. This third generation version is quieter and more comfortable and the structure feels more solid. One thing Subaru worked on specifically was to give the seats more structure and have them more solidly mounted and I think that improvement is noticeable as well. The seats do feel more comfortable than before and supportive as well. And all those things I talked about, about having more body roll in the corners and a fair amount of motion, pitch and dive as well, that leads to a comfortable ride. It handles all the bumps and whoops in the road absolutely pleasantly. Nothing about it is harsh. And yeah, this thing is perfectly pleasant. Now on this particular drive, I actually didn't get a chance to drive it on the interstate, but I've been on some faster two lane roads and the feel is much the same on the interstate. And the Crosstrek does have several driving aids, which Subaru calls EyeSight. I'll go ahead and put those up on the screen right now so you can check out. It is a competitive and comprehensive list of driving aids if you're into that kind of thing. Can you tow with the Subaru Crosstrek? Yes, yes you can. Not a lot, but you can tow up to 1,500 pounds, which you know is a couple of motocross bikes, a jet ski, or a super small utility trailer, stuff like that, or a really, really good bike rack. So what do we think of this third generation Subaru Crosstrek? I am quite happy with the structural improvements that Subaru made to this car. This just feels a lot more solid, underneath you. I think the level of technology that Subaru includes in the sport trim is a nice level. Having a wireless smartphone charger is always a plus. Heated seats is nice. And this portrait style mounted 11.6 inch center console touchscreen is easy to read, easy to use, and has plenty of features. Also, this does have some legit off-road cred. 8.7 inches of ground clearance, that is higher than a lot of cars out there. In fact, it's higher than the brand new Honda Pilot Trail Sport. 
just as an example. And this isn't even the off-roadiest version of the Crosstrek. There is a wilderness coming. So it's a really nice combination of off-road prowess, low price, economical, it does have plenty of safety features, and drives better than it ever has before. I'm Robin Warner, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you showed me by giving it a thumbs up. Doing so helps me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you liked the Crosstrek, something you might wanna check out, it is a little bit more expensive, is the Ford Bronco Sport. That was Ford's approach to taking a compact SUV and making it more off-road friendly, and it has some compelling features as well. And from there, I reviewed a lot of stuff by now. Something's gonna pop up on the screen next to me. Hopefully, it's something that you're interested in, and if you do watch it, I definitely hope you like it. Okay, goodbye for now.